Crackberry.com. Hello everyone, Brian here with Crackberry.com. What I'd like to show in this video is a tutorial using active frames, specifically dynamically changing active frames. So I have my QNX Momentix ID loaded up that's connected to my simulator, which I have right here. So let's go ahead and get started with our example. And rather than starting with a blank project, if you go on developer.blackberry.com, I have a really great example of using dynamic covers for active frames. And they go through and explain each piece as well as showing sample code. And I have that loaded up in my project called Dynamic Frame. And I'm going to go over the same pieces that they go over. The first thing they have you do is create a class called Active Frame QML. In this class, it inherits the scene cover which is defined in a QML, QML file called appcover.qml. Also in our active frame QML constructor, we have a fine child of a label with the object named the label. Finally, there's a queue invocable function called update that will set the text of a string of text passed into it. Next, in our application UI CPP file, make sure that you include your active frame QML header of the class we just created. Then in the application UI constructor, you'll see the uh, same main.qml as the root of the app. However, there's now an instance created for active frame. And that active frame is for whenever the scene cover is active or you move to the minimized state. And then to expose this active frame to the main.qml file, we set a context property, which is also called active frame. Now let's jump over to our QML. And in our QML file, we have a container that holds a text field with an ID app label, string of text saying hello world. On creation completed, we're listening for the signal application thumbnail, which is fired whenever the app is moved to the thumbnail state. And we're going to connect that to a function we've defined below called on thumbnail. Inside that function, it'll call update, where we defined in our active frame QML class and we'll pass the app label.txt from our text field. Now moving on to our scene cover.qml file, we'll see that label with the object name the label that we use in our active frame.qml of finding that child and we'll update that label. So that's all the pieces you need. Let's go ahead and run that function on the simulator and see it in action just real quick. So we're loading up our dynamic frame example. And here is that hello world. Whenever I move this to the minimized state, it'll set our scene cover with whatever is in that text field. And so I can change that to whatever I want and it will update each time I minimize. So let's go ahead and close that. And we'll go ahead and close all of these. But that example is a bit boring. So what I thought would be more fun is if the app actually updated the active frame on its own based off something it would be doing in the background. I thought the best way to show that would be as if it was tied to a timer. So I've created another project that I've called Active Timer that has the same source files from our example, the Active Frame class and the updated application UI, as well as the main.qml and appcover.qml. Let's go ahead and open up main.qml and change this to have timer and timer controls. So here's my real-time preview so I can 
see what I'm doing as I adjust things. Let's go ahead and change this to be a label. It's going to be my timer, so I'm going to change this to be time label just to keep things organized. Doesn't really matter, but might help once the app gets bigger. And I'll have my timer start at zero. I'm going to want to be able to call this label by buttons that I create next. So I'm going to create a property that allows me to call it. That's going to be an integer that I call my time. And it'll be a number of time label dot text. So as I said, I'm going to create some buttons that control the timer. I'm going to stack them left to right. So I'm changing my layout properties. Go ahead and create a, my first button. My first button will be to lower the timer quite a bit. So I'll create some text, the on-click signal. Let me copy this button a couple times. So the next button will lower the time just a bit. This one will increase it a bit and increase it quite a bit. So as I said, I want to be able to make it so I adjust the time label. So we'll make it so when this button is clicked, the time label dot text will be updated to the my time minus 10, and we'll adjust the other buttons accordingly. So this will be my time minus 1, this will be my time plus 1, and finally my time plus 10. Let's organize our code. Next, we'll create a start button. So we'll call it text start. And this will be what starts our timer. So it will also have an on clicked signal. But Cascades has no built in timer. So what we'll have to do is go into application UI and call in a custom timer class, which we can call in the QTimer class from QT. So to do that, we can register that by calling in the QTimer. So let's go ahead and call that by typing in this string of text. Our QML register type is QTimer. We're going to add it to our db.cascades library version 1.0, and we'll call it in by calling QTimer. And now that that new type is registered, in our QML we can have an attached object that is QTimer. We'll go ahead and give this an ID, we'll call it countdown. By default, QTimer has an interval, which counts in milliseconds. So to count down one second, you will call 1,000 milliseconds. And it fires a signal called on timeout every interval. So in this case, every 1,000 milliseconds or one second. And on this interval, we would like it so my time is lowered by 1, and then we would want to have the time label dot text updated with the new my time. And finally in here we also want to update the active frame the same way that it does whenever it goes to thumbnail, so we can call this same function. As you can see, once I 
called in the queue timer, I lost my real time preview because once you have custom types in your QML, your real time preview no longer works. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. Looking over my code, everything looks ready, so I'm going to call in this to run on my simulator. So we'll save my work and see it in action. See that I don't have any errors in my build, so it'll load up on the simulator now. So these buttons adjust my value. I click start. And I realized that I did not add the start timer to the on click. So let's go ahead and add that real quick. Sorry about that. So now it should work properly. Let's go ahead and rerun this real quick. Once again, no errors in my console. It'll close my app automatically and load up with the new code. So my buttons still work as I expect them to. And I can quick start and it will update my timer. And when I move to the minimized state, you'll see that the active frame is updated in real time as it's updated in the app. So if I uh, do a little bit of tweaking to my main.qml and my app cover.qml, which I've done behind the scenes, that just formats everything a bit differently, adds a title, and then same thing with my app cover.qml just added a new background image, tweaked things a bit to make it look a little bit better. You can see that this example starts to look like a pretty nice app. So I'm going to run it again with my updated code, just different formatting, nothing special, just wanted to show what it looked like looking a little nicer. So here's just some new formatting. All the functions are the exact same that I just showed. Start the timer. And again, when you minimize it, it'll change to the active frame that updates in real time. So that's about it for active frames. I hope you enjoyed this example.